Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm trying a new art supply I haven't tried before. These are watercolor brush pens. I'm excited to give it a go and try something new. And speaking of trying new things, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes on all kinds of topics ranging from drawing to painting to business type things or editing. There's just a gigantic collection of videos and if you have their premium membership it gives you unlimited access to all the videos. So if you're looking to expand your skill set to advance your career or you just want to try something new as a fun little hobby then it's the place to go. Recently I've been watching videos about fashion design and ones about designing jewelry like how to draw and render jewelry. Very very interesting. But the one I watched that was relevant to this video is called Blending Water-Based Markers by Veronica Ruiz. Little did I know there are apparently eight ways to blend watercolor pens. So I'm going to be trying some of those techniques in today's video. Skillshare is super affordable with their annual plan. It works out to less than $10 a month. And if you're looking to join, the first 500 people to use my link in the video description will get their first two months of Skillshare for free. So definitely take advantage of that. And thank you Skillshare for once again sponsoring my channel. So I guess let's start by opening up the box. I've already opened it once before because I was really excited to see them. And so I have opened it. I just quickly looked at them and then I closed it up and that was it. This I just got off Amazon. I was just searching watercolor brush markers on Amazon and this is one of the ones that came up. I was drawn in by the very pretty packaging and you know it had good reviews and a decent color selection so I thought why not give it a try. It says here 24 colored brush pens with travel case, flexible brush tip for fine or bold strokes, refillable ink for non-stop creativity, odorless and non-toxic, water soluble dye based ink, washable off skin and clothes. I didn't know there were refills for this. So that's very nice. Okay, let's open this up. I can already tell this is gonna be a long video based on how much art I wanna color. So I'm like, okay girl, speed it up. <laughs> okay, this says a lot of the same stuff as the back of the box did. And then here's the case, which ho ho ho, look how fancy this is. So opening this up, oh baby. <gasps> look at that silica gel, oh yes. <laughs> Wait, is that way too bright? I have a new filming setup, so I'm still getting used to the settings and controlling everything. It's interesting how the color on the packaging is on this part of the marker, which normally you can't see with a lid on, but because they're clear lids, you can see it. Here's what the marker looks like. Very, very nice barrel. Bashful Blue C126, refillable ink, colorit.com. Oh, this is where it opens. Ooh, yes, it is just pour the ink inside. And oh my God, the screw off end. That would make it so convenient. Oh my gosh. Here's what the brush nibs look like. Very nice. Is it actual bristles? Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. It's actual individual paint bristles. Noise. As cute as this case is, I'm gonna take the markers out for now. <laughs> I'll probably put them back, but just for the sake of filming, I need a little more space. And I just don't wanna be putting them in and out of these little thingies the whole time. But once I'm done, I'll put them back in. So first I'm gonna do some swatches. Just see what these colors are like. Actually, I probably should have left them in order before I did the swatches, because I think they were kind of in color order. Thrilling teal, what a name. Oh my god, these names are hilarious. Okay, let me just start swatching. Let me just start swatching. We'll start with some bluish colors. So this first one is, oh, it's upside down because I'm left-handed. <laughs> Gorgeous gray. I'm going to actually grab black. If that's gray, I'm going to do black first. Okay, all right. So the black was called Blissful Black. That one is Gorgeous Gray. This one is Bashful Blue. I'm using watercolor paper, by the way. This one is Tempting Turquoise. Okay, I wouldn't call that turquoise. That's just like a sky blue, but cute, cute. Ooh, oh, oh, that looks like a B95 or B97, which is, oh, those are some of my favorite Copic colors. It's kind of a desaturated blue. This one is Nifty Navy. Yeah, that's a bright one. I know there's swatches on the back of the box, but it's different than swatching them in real life. Plus, you know, it depends what paper you're using as well. It'll affect the look. Okay, next I've grabbed some more greenish looking colors. 
we have Thrilling Teal. That's more what I was expecting for the turquoise earlier. I mean, I guess it's still turquoise. I don't know. I always consider turquoise to be a little bit greenish. This one is Dashing Dark Green. Optimal Olive. Grounded Green. Proud Pale Green. Lush, luxurious Lime. I almost said Luscious. Luxurious Lime. Daydream Yellow. Trusty Tangerine. Outspoken Orange. Sweet Ginger. Witty Raspberry. Faithful Fuchsia. Positive Peach. Regal Red. Lovely Lilac. Laid Back Lavender. Sharp Indigo. Hearty Brown. I probably should have done it half and half too. That would have looked a little nicer. Oh well. I don't know if I'll swatch them all with water, but I want to do at least a few to see what it's like. I'm going to try out this blue, the Nifty Navy. I'm going to try dipping it in the water. Ooh, it feels like I'm just losing ink into the water. Ah. I don't know how often I'll use that technique, but that's one way you can go about this. I didn't want to let the nib sit too long. It's a lot faster than charging a chameleon marker. <laughs> Another way I could do it, why am I dipping that? <laughs> Another way I could do it is to just use a water brush. Oh, that's leaking. And then try going on top. Oh baby, look at that. Look at that watercolor effect. Mm. I'm gonna try that again, but I'm gonna try to blend a couple colors together. Put down a bit of water, put down a bit of orange. Now some yellow. Can't see where my water ends. <laughs> cool. Now I'm gonna try laying down some color and then adding water to it. You get a really rough edge to your strokes when you have individual bristles like this. I, I'm not sure what I prefer. Like when it comes to brush pens for outlining, I don't like them to have bristles, like the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen does, and it kind of bugs me. Hmm, that looks nice. Individual bristles though does give you a more traditional look, more like an actual paintbrush. This is just lovely. It's the convenience of markers, but it's watercolor. And I know this is nothing new. I've just never properly tried this before. I did have some kind of brush pens as a kid but I've never really owned anything like this as an adult. So I have some sketches done here and these are based off of Met Gala looks. And I'm not one who's all about fashion, but I'm trying to pay a little more attention to it because it can make for more interesting art. And it's more interesting than me just drawing a girl in like a t-shirt and leggings again. You know, I want more ideas. So I'm trying to pay more attention to fashion. That's why I've been watching some fashion stuff on Skillshare. So I'm just like, I need more fashion stuff in my life. It's hard as an artist. You have to be kind of a jack of all trades. Like if you want to draw buildings, you have to know a lot about buildings. If you want to draw clothes, you need to know a decent amount about clothes. It's, there's a lot to learn. Anyway, here we have Lupita Nyong'o and she wore this beautiful outfit with these huge colorful sleeves. I knew that would be perfect for this because I can take advantage of the watercolor properties of these pens to make a really beautiful effect. And then we have Ryan Murphy. He had this gorgeous outfit just covered in beads, lots of pearls, and that one can be a little tricky because, I don't know, it, I'm, I'm, it's a bunch of very precise dots, but I'm gonna do it more loose, more watercolory, and I can add a bit of details in with a white gel pen too for some of the beading. And then I have Zendaya, who was dressed like Cinderella. Her arms feel short, and I don't know if that's just because I drew her with a big head or what, but whatever. We're just going to roll with it, and that's why this video is going to be really long. I think I'm going to start with Ryan's because his is the most simple because his outfit is mostly one color. There's just slight color variations, so I feel like that would be a good launching point for this. I tried to sketch as cleanly as possible because I knew I'd be putting color directly on this, so this is... This is my best effort. He has white facial hair. I'm, yeah, we'll see. Oh, wait, girl, girl. I did not clean my brush off. Oh my gosh, what is you doing? Well, he's gonna have a bit of a pink spot on his face. This is really leaking out of here. I think I have one other brush pen that's not a fine tip like this. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Yeah, I can't find it. So I'm gonna do the old regular paintbrush in water technique. I'm not a watercolor artist, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh, I also wonder how much this is going to smudge my pencil lines. Hee <laughs> hee. That kind of works for the skin tone, though. I'm scared. Water watercolor scary. I can't even see where I'm putting water down, and I feel like by the time I add water to his whole face, it'll uh, 
be dried up. <laughs> just add lots, add lots. It's watercolor paper, it can handle it. This is just Canson stuff. The stuff I got from Walmart that you saw in my Walmart haul. I need to do more of the videos from that haul. I've just, <laughs> yeah, I keep getting other ideas. <laughs> I just had too many ideas, <laughs> so little time. Okay, just a touch of color. I'll probably go in a bit with my white gel pen for some of the hairs. I could have left more of the, the white of the paper showing through, I suppose. I don't think of these things. I'm trying to do more real-time stuff due to popular demand. And because it's fun to watch real-time stuff, it's like you're hanging out with the person while they draw. I just get nervous about it because I spend so long on my art. I'm not fast, like, especially sketching, I'm so slow. So I was like, okay, because there's so many components to this video, I at the very least have to do the sketching in advance. And since the, the video is about watercolor color pens, you don't really need to see the sketching. But yes, there are people who have been requesting the real-time videos, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, oh, man, like, I can't have an eight-hour video. Obviously, I'd trim it down and stuff, but I'm just thinking, hmm, how's this going to work? And so I've been kind of, you know, resisting. And then I got a comment that just totally put it into perspective for me. The person said that when it's sped up like a speed paint and I'm just sitting there doing my voiceover... It feels like I'm just doing an essay about the art or about the video, that kind of thing. And that is when it really clicked for me. That's when I was like, oh my God, yes, you're right. Like, I don't know, just sometimes people word things a certain way and just boom, it clicks. And that's what it was for me when they mentioned it felt like an essay. I was like, oh my gosh, it does. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. Um, that's still going to happen, especially for things like oil paintings where I'm not going to be filming bits real time because I spent like at least 20 hours per painting. Oh, I keep forgetting his beard is here. I'm like, oh, I need to add some shading. You know, whatever, I guess we're adding the beard after. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna have sped up portions of this video. I'm just, you know, trying to sit here and chat real time, make it a little more interesting. I don't even really need the other colors. It depends how dark I'm getting. And I'm trying to not overly blend stuff. I want it to have some hard edges. I want it to look watercolory. One look I really liked that I kind of wanted to do for this video, but I'm like, Bailey, you already have three. There's no time for a fourth, <laughs> was Ezra Miller. I even did a little sketch of what I would do for his. Like, I sketched it up in Procreate. But uh, it was just one that isn't as suited to the watercolor thing. Like, it would be fine doing that in watercolor. I just I just thought, well, let's, let's just do these ones. But I loved his, all the eyes on his face. I loved the mask. I loved his nails. I loved his little beaded corset thing. It was just all so good. I would just like to give him a shout out because that was probably my favorite look of the night, even though I didn't see them all. I wasn't watching it or anything. I just saw pictures online. When you're not used to what colors you have, it's always a little scary. Yeah, I don't know, man. I should have used some of that pink, actually, because that pink is there on his face already. Now his neck's looking too orange. Okay, I'm going to skip down to his cloak and add a bunch of water. And we're gonna do some splotches. Probably should have a bigger brush for this. Psst. I'm just gonna add color in and I'm gonna make it splotchy. This would be fun. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna focus on one side at a time because I'm scared it's gonna dry up. This is the same color I used for the base of his skin and some of that orangey color. This is the main color of the cloak. And I'm gonna go in and add a bit more water so it spreads out. I want some areas of concentrated color. Because it's beaded, I want it to look very speckled. Now, this is going to be an RC version of it. It's not going to have all the details. I need to grab some of that bright pink and get it in here. Yes. Just a touch. It actually is pretty easy to pick it up off of the paper here. <laughs> Normally you'd want something non-porous to put a bit of the ink on so you can scoop it up. Okay, I dipped the brown just ever so slightly because I'm scared this is going to be too dark. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool. I'm going to do the same thing on the rest of him. So I'm just going to time lapse this bit and then I'll come back to do some more details.
I didn't tape down my paper on all sides, so it's buckling a little bit. I mean, it would have buckled anyway. <laughs> I'm just gonna go back in now and add some extra details, like redefining some of the facial, facial, facial features. I probably don't wanna use this pencil. This is a Prismacolor Collie Race. I probably want something with a little more pigment. I'm just trying to decide how much detail I wanna get in with these pens because once the water is dry, I can go in and add more dots because his, his look is very speckled, but I just love this watercolor texture. I don't know if I want to touch it too much. I am going to go in with a white gel pen, but I don't think I want to add too much detail. You know, this is not realism. It doesn't need to look exactly as it does in real life. I also want to keep this loose. I don't want to be too strict with my lines. Another thing I've been trying to do, well, been trying to do, <laughs> more like just now. <laughs> And while I was sketching these out, I'm just trying to be faster, especially if I'm going to do more real time videos. I need to be a little bit faster, but I think that could also help me have less stiffness in my art. And it would, I don't know, just be a way to get more art done. <laughs> like I sometimes just, not sometimes, I all the time spend way too long on things and trying to get every little line perfect. Like that's going to make your art more stiff. And so I'm trying to avoid that. Okay, his mustache is a little darker than the rest of his beard and his little chin bit. So I'm gonna add a bit of lines with the pencil, but not too much. And hopefully the gel pen doesn't look stupid. Cause I gotta get up to the top of his head too. Ugh, yeah, I should've just left that white on the paper. So I don't wanna have to get in like every little strand of hair here. With watercolor, you're supposed to leave the whites of the page for anything that's white. Do I do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I made his eyes too open. It's supposed to make him sagging a bit more. I kind of forgot about that. Ryan, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. This doesn't really look like you. Although, let's be honest, he's not watching. <laughs> One of the many things I'm really bad at is capturing the likeness of a real person. I just can't. <laughs> I think he's recognizable based on the outfit. If you saw the Met Gala outfits. That orange is a bit bright on the orange areas, but that's uh, okay. Whoop. Actually, that's fine. Some of the lines are kind of like double lines. Let's purposely make some of the other ones double lines. It looks great. It looks loose. I don't want to add too many. I don't want to do every bead. We're just doing like a, an indication of the beads like... I don't know. I just think back to this time in school. I had this class called Drawing for Animators, and it was really all about staging, but I had to recreate this panel from uh, from Tangled. I mean, we had a choice of what still images from what movies we wanted to do, and I found this still from Tangled where she's knitting, and I drew every little piece of yarn in the in the scarf. And my teacher was like, no, you don't need to draw every little thing of detail. It's kind of like if you're drawing a mermaid, you don't need to draw every scale on the mermaid. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. And so I always think back to that. I'm like, okay, you don't need to draw every little tiny bead. Now on his outfit, it does seem like the big beads are a little more concentrated on the shoulder area. So I am gonna add extras around there. And then on his headdress, I guess that's what you call it. Is it a collar? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's not really on his head. I guess it's a collar. The beads are more concentrated along the outer edge. Okay. I don't want to overdo it on the gel pen, so I'm going to stop there. I need to trim the paper so that it doesn't look as ridiculous, but there he is. <laughs> There's Ryan Murphy in his Met Gala look. Oh my. I'm actually really digging that. I like that watercolor look. Hee hee hee. His eyes could be more broody. It's kind of hard to go back in and add that. Ooh. Okay, next, let's do, hmm, which one, which one? This one's gonna be a little bit more intricate with the colors, but this one's bigger. I might do this one first because it's more simple in terms of colors, and then we'll do the exciting one last. Like, compared to her body, her arm length is pretty okay. I think it's the big head throwing me off, but at the same time, I always draw big heads, so I don't know. Also, this arm is supposed to be a little foreshortened. This one, I actually referenced an actual photo from the night. I swear, even if you're not into fashion, the crazy looks they pull for these Met Gala events, very inspirational, okay? 
this was a very gorgeous look because her dress was lit up, but it wasn't lit up originally. When she first came out, it looked kind of gray, and then her fairy godmother twirled his wand, and her dress started to light up from the bottom and went up. It was pretty gorgeous. Okay, where's the light source? Let's have the light coming this way. So shadows over here. I like to have the character facing the light source a lot of the time. Gotta hurry up and darken some areas before it dries too much. But I want to add some brown in there, but not just the straight up brown, because I think it's going to get too dark. I'm going to, wait, that's not the color I want. <laughs> I'm going to grab the brown and scribble it onto the plastic and pick up some of the color with this pen and add it in. Whoa, that's a lot. And I just set my palm in it. What am I doing? I'm a mess. Okay, put this on this side. No wonder I don't get invited to the Met Gala. <laughs> also because I'm not a celebrity, but you know. The theme of the Met Gala was camp, so they wanted campy looks. And that basically just means something that's kind of over the top, like it's an exaggeration or like kind of pokes fun at whatever that thing is. It's hard to explain. Maybe someone has a better definition than me, but this is definitely a campy look because, well, one, it's extra, but two, it's a ball. Like they're at the Met Gala and she dresses as Cinderella. Like, you know, how fitting almost like a satire of what it is. This stuff's drying, it's getting hard to spread, and then I put down too much water and it's gonna make a big water line. Ah, Zendaya, I'm sorry. <laughs> she has such a bronzed look in this reference, but my marker's kind of orangey. <coughs> Why? Maybe she just has a really bad foundation. <laughs> oh yeah, she has blue eyelids. Don't cover those too much. We gotta add some blue on there. I keep thinking this is a light blue, but it's gray. I'm gonna grab a black pencil just for some of the details because the blue is gonna blend in a little too much, especially for the eyes. She often had her eyelids half closed, so I'm trying to capture some of that. She just had this dreamy look to her. It's looking a little muddy and unblended, but it's, it's okay, Bales, it doesn't have to be blended. Muddy though, we don't want that. If you're thinking I'm only drawing this one because it's a princess, you're partially right, but also Zendaya is a bouse. And the colors in the dress just would work really well for these watercolor ones. Because there are some cool looks that I felt really inspired by, but it just, I don't know, I felt there were other ones that I could do more of a, an intense watercolor blotchy look and it would look better. I'm just straight up using pencil for the lips. Kind of cheating this a bit. Actually, did that kind of dark. They're a little more pinkish. Well, you know. For those of you who make YouTube videos or just have any kind of social media account, do you ever wonder if celebrities are watching? I feel like they have better things to do, but even if it's like, what if it's like a celebrity's kid? And like, what if my videos are playing in their house? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> ah, sometimes I wonder. The skin's gonna look extra orangey against her dress because it'll complement the blue. See, I can't get any more color out of there. It's as dark as it's gonna get until I get some of the water off this brush. There we go. And we'll do the brown trick again. I'm going to try to be faster in these videos in the future. It's hard. The real-time videos are always going to be longer than a speed paint because normally I try to keep my speed paints down to... What am I doing? Which color am I grabbing? This. Normally I try to keep my speed paints... Ah, yeah. Normally I try to keep my speed paints around 10 to 12 minutes. I feel like it's a nice digestible format. But for real time, I feel like it's easier to stay around longer, I guess. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. I still don't want these to be too long. Like up to 20 minutes, fine. Half an hour, no. <laughs> but I think that's the territory we're in with this video. Sometimes I am tempted to just dip it in the water for like a split second just because I don't want the full color. I guess if you're fast, it's okay. She kind of looks like Ariana Grande. <laughs> the way I drew her. <laughs> Just give her a nice tall pony. Woo, it's Ariana. <laughs> okay, time for the hair. I zoomed in a little bit for this one. Oh, I'm already getting that all over the skin. I wanted the skin dry so I could keep my yellow contained to the watery areas. Because if one watery area is up next to another watery area, the color is just gonna leak over. So she has blonde hair with dark roots in this. Some of these are not roots, they're just, it's hair that's just there. 
her bangs really swoop over so the majority of the roots that are visible are around that piece right there okay next i'm gonna do her oh she's got that poo poo mark Rawr. i tried to exaggerate the puffiness a little bit but now looking back i'm like no this doesn't even look that exaggerated actually i should add the blue first because i don't want too much of it so while the water is still I almost said while it's really wet. While the water's wet, wait, isn't that what water is? I just meant before it all dries up on the page. Get in some of that blue just so we don't get too much blue. I'm seriously having so much fun with this. And the watercolor is encouraging me to be carefree and just like la la la. Be less methodical about it, you know? And I am gonna go with my white gel pen just to try to hide some of this brown. I'm gonna have to wait for the water to dry. Yeah, it's kind of working. <coughs> See, I see a hard edge like that, and I'm like, oh, I gotta fix that. And then I think, no, it, it's cute. It's got the watercolor look. I feel like real time like this, you get more of my thought process, just the little bits that I don't feel are worth mentioning when I'm doing a voiceover. And just my real time reaction to the process. Like I screw something up, you get my reaction to that. In a speed paint, you don't even really see the mistakes because everything's flying by so fast. Okay, both pieces of the dress are the same colors, but there is a dark stripe right there so let's just fill this in i mean i'll do the the bodice area first my tape is untaping it is a low tack tape so that it won't rip the paper but sometimes if you unstick it and restick it it's not gonna stick again maybe i can get away with some of that purple while it's really wet whoa whoa yeah just a little bit it has a very streaky look so i'm trying to keep these lines more vertical and i'm going to take this same blue and do the dark stripe without adding any water underneath so it stays nice and dark probably should have waited for the bodice to dry because the color's bleeding in a little bit although that kind of looks cool it makes it look more like that's a strip of light which it is in the reference there's a strip of light right next to the dark blue and the fuzziness kind of helps with that effect oh and then of course this side is not being fuzzy <laughs> inconsistent okay i'm gonna get a bigger brush for this part go 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 move 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 but also be slow and steady around the edges oh hi kiki oh no bye kiki bye get down okay no 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 oh i really should have taped this one down this is a lot of water for this to handle it's just billowing forward it's just 3d art now the lines going up her dresser even if it's squiggly Embrace the squiggliness of watercolor. There's a hair there. Get out of there, hair. Okay, maybe added too much water. It's a good time, though, to add the dark colors is when you have too much water because then they won't be too overpowering. That part's a bit dry because I set my wrist in it or I missed a patch to begin with, one of the two. Can't get all my colors down before it's drying, but then if I add more water now, it's going to start leaking bits everywhere. The color's gonna run just like that. I mean, we want some of that. Stay vertical, stay vertical. And maintain some areas of white. I'm losing some of them. Uh, the unpredictability of watercolor. Gotta love it. I mean, I do love it. I have a love-hate relationship with watercolor. <laughs> This is still a little bit wet, but I'm adding in the outlines. This is a very crinkly piece of paper. <laughs> Holy heck, I need to turn this. <laughs> My lines are getting so bad. Okay, there it is. I don't think I like this one as much as the first one, but it was still fun to do. Okay, so let's start with her face as usual. I think her eyelids are just silver and it's reflecting the pink from her shirt. Either way, it's gonna have some pink in it. <laughs> Starting with the water. Well, we still got blue on there. See, this is why you gotta rub on your paper towel bales. You can't just go in there all willy nilly. There's cross contamination. Now that we're on the last one, I feel like I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> I already talked about so much. Like, why did I decide it would be a good idea to do three drawings in a real-time video? I was gonna do four, I was gonna do Ezra, and then I was like, no, that's too much. 
this is too much. Like one of these would have been perfect for a real time video. I'd still have to trim it down a lot. Like there's a lot you, I don't need to do that part yet. There's a lot you don't see. A lot that's sped up or just cut out. But yeah, like it's still long, but it's better than this video, which is forever long. I kind of want to mix in a bit of this other color because this is kind of a grayish brown, except now the grayishness of the shadow is going to make her look like she has a five o'clock shadow. Oh yeah, I forgot about the silver on the eyelids. Oh my gosh. Bales, what are you doing? Yeah, it's looking a little muddy. Sometimes it looks a little brighter and then other times it looks more gray. I think when it gets watered down a bit, the gray starts to show. I'm sorry, I don't mean to give you gray skin. I just love the way I drew her face, so I'm scared I'm going to lose that. Like, I can bring the detail back in, but redrawing it in, it doesn't ever look the same as when you first sketched it. I don't think this one's going to have any definitive light source, just light coming from the front, I guess. Yeah, this color looks so much better undiluted than it does diluted. I did notice with my dark blue that once I watered it down, it's like the grays were being separated from the blues, like the gray really came out. So maybe this is like that too. I keep wanting to shade underneath her eyelids. I have my camera settings set to vibrant, so I'm scared this is picking up even extra orangey. <laughs> kind of lost all the whites of the eyes. Ah! All right, well, while that mess is drying, <laughs> let's go in and add some yellow to her golden hair combs, the hair picks. I'm just going straight in with the yellow. And then I'm going to add a bit of water after. And then go in with the black. Let's, mm, oh, I probably should let that dry. Dry faster. I can try to salvage <laughs> her eyelids in the meantime. Even the whites of her eyes, I can't see where I originally drew them. But yeah, I'm gonna add a bunch of dots for this silver. She also has a white of this, a line of this silver down here. You know, in this picture I'm looking at, it almost looks like maybe there is pink up here. It looks more clear cut in this photo, so maybe there is some pink in there. I'll just speckle in a little bit of pink. Since I'm not adding any water right here, I'll draw in her lips. This color might not be quite dark enough. Her lips are almost black. Oop, I stuck my arm in my thingy again. I think her hair shouldn't have much water added to it because it is really dark. So I'm gonna add the black in first and then just add bits of water on top. Like I'll leave little gaps. Oop, Christian's here. Hi, Christian. Hi. From the side, her hair actually looks really long. It sticks pretty far back. It's really cool. Although from the front, it doesn't look quite as long. I almost don't need to add water to this. The black is not very black on the first pass, but then if you go back over it, it looks more black. So I could have just done two separate passes. I'm adding in a bit of pencil here for some highlight because I notice her face reflects a lot of pure white like that. So glowy. Where did you get that? Kiki has a spool of blue filament for my 3D pens. I haven't even done 3D pen stuff in forever. Where did that come from? Okay, I think her face is dry enough. I can go in and add some more detail. Ugh, I just wish I could see my original sketch because I liked it. Ooh, my hand's transferring some of the black. I'll use the paper towel as a little buffer. One eye is being more squinty than the other. Ah! Okay, it's not a major difference, I guess. And a little bit of brown. Make sure the corners of her mouth are upturned. I want her to have a little smile. Oh, her mouth's drooping a little more on one side. Initially, I was concerned with how this is turning out. Now, I'm really liking it, especially when I look on screen to see it from afar. Actually, while I'm here, let's add some outlines kind of by the hair. Keep it a little squiggly. Oh, wait, the combs are fists. <gasps> oh, I didn't even recognize that. Oh, that's so cool. It's like a fist, like holding up a fist. Oh, boy, let's add that in. That's powerful. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, it's a good thing I looked up an HD picture and zoomed in. Let's do, let me switch to a different picture. She's covering her chest here. I need one where I can see her chest. That sounded a little gross. Oh, this one you can. Oh, the colors look extra vibrant in this one. Ooh, wow. Okay, oh, there is some color in her earrings. 
See, now that I have the zoomed in version, I'm like, oh, I've been drawing it wrong. <laughs> we'll just add a few specks of color in there. There's a bit of pink, red, green, kind of a burgundy. I'll add a couple of those. Oh yeah, that's a nice close-up of her makeup. Yeah, I think that's definitely pink. Even the buttons, each button has a whole bunch of intricate little things in it. Okay, okay, well, we're doing a more simplified version. We're definitely gonna need this bright pink right here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I thought I ruined this one. It's pulling together now, it's pulling together. <laughs> oh, oh, oh shoot, I'm supposed to leave actually a stripe of pink in the middle. Beware, beware. And a stripe of pink here. Gotta make sure this area stays wet because we want these colors to bleed together but not totally blend. Just bleed a bit. And then it goes pink all the way up. Usually I have colors that are way too bright. When you have a limited color set, a lot of times like there are just a lot of bright ones. This works to my favor on this one because she has tons of bright colors. Okay, one wing at a time. We've got the bright lime green on the outside. Although my lime green looks a little, like that one looks a little yellow. Actually, no, this is, this is, this is kind of accurate. See, it is one piece folded over. Some angles I saw it looked like a totally separate, kind of almost second wing in the back, but no, it's one piece that folds over. So the lime green follows the edge like that. And that leads into some blue. That's not the right blue. That one's too pale. There we go. Spread, my children. Spread into one another. Dinsy pink. These are not spreading as much as I wanted them to. Ooh, okay, let's not get too crazy though. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, gosh. I feel like I'm just way less talkative from when I started. I'm like, huh. Talking throughout these real-time videos is a little exhausting. I'm used to live streaming, but that's not a one-way conversation. I get to read chat and stuff here. I'm just like, hmm. Also, if I was coloring these with Copics, this would take me way longer. This is kind of freeing with the watercolor patterns. <laughs> mm-hmm, lovely. Are you being cute? Oh, yes, yeah, she is. She's all stretched out. Doing her little roly polies, look at me, mummy kind of act. This is like dry now. This is this part right here. I mean, it's a little bit wet, but. Mostly that dried up. <laughs> it's hard because when it's really wet, your colors aren't as dark. So you want it to start drying a little bit so that your colors show up more. But you can't wait too long. Also, this is like not symmetrical at all. I mean, this one from the reference I was looking at, it kind of billowed up over her arm and then went up. I think that's why. I mean, I didn't reference this pose specifically. It just made up this pose. Just kind of a slight hip jutting up to the side look. Also, I did not leave enough white here. Ruined! The first side was so good. Now I've soiled it. Oh, see, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to be so dark. It's dry bales, what do you expect? Okay, don't touch the pink, then the yellow. It's gonna get muddy. Oh, Jesus, what did I just say? Next, I'm gonna do the bottom part here, which is yeah, kind of pink and brown. Do you actually see her skin through the whole thing? Oh, you do. See, I'm learning new things with these zoom-ins. There's the stars, and then the dark parts are her skin. There's extra beading at the top here, and then that extra beading goes away at the bottom. But it's there up here. Oh, and there's a bunch of rings at the bottom. Oh, yes. Okay, that's kind of out of focus for you guys. But <laughs> sorry, it's actually really cool. Seeing the whole thing from afar is one thing, but then seeing it up close, it's like, ooh, ooh. I'm just gonna go in with some pink blotches and brown blotches and let it let it do its watercolor thing. Blotch, blotch, blotch. Blotch, 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 blotch. 
These are not bleeding as much as I wanted them to. That means let's add more water. It's kind of hard to outline these bits. <laughs> Maybe I'll mostly stick to the outer lines. It's it's fluffy anyway, you know, you don't want the line to be too harsh. Because then it doesn't look as floof. Try to keep it light. And a little jagged. Since some of the other areas of our skin have a bit of black outline, I'll do that here too. And I'm going to go in with a white gel pen. Where did that thing go? It's kind of under my phone. I'm just going to add a bit of detailing to her jewels. Make them look a little sparkly. Including her buttons down the front here. And there are also blue lines coming down like this. I don't want to draw in some of these stars here and they're like, no. Maybe just add a few dots to show sparkle, but that's about it. Gotta keep the loose watercolor look. Ugh, must resist, must resist control. I'm just gonna go in with a bit of navy blue in some areas, but not others. Just cause I feel like these lines could be darkened a little bit, but I don't want them to all be the same color. So there we have it. Ooh la la. That was a fun one to do. I really enjoyed that. You know what? I'm just gonna add a little bit more <laughs> that navy right here. Boom. Boom. Love it. Yeah, these two are definitely my faves. This one didn't turn out as well. The Ariana Grande Zendaya Cinderella. It's still cool though. I like the look in the skirt, which was the main thing of was going for. <laughs> I think the face is just a little mucky because it's drawn smaller. It was a little bit more difficult. These ones are bigger. Which one's your fave of the bunch? And what was your favorite look from Met Gala? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun testing out these watercolor markers. They're really fun to work with. I'm definitely going to be using them more in future videos. It'd be nice to have a larger color collection to choose from, but then I'm like, are you really gonna use them that much? I don't know. <laughs> I tell myself I will, but will I? I'm just into too many different things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget about that Skillshare offer. The first 500 people get their first two months for free. Link is in the description. Thank you, and I'll see you in my next video.